Good morning, UP scientists. Uh, today we're continuing to get into our new unit about ecosystem restoration. And today we're gonna to be starting an experiment that we're gonna be uh, observing basically for the rest of the year. So um, first, we're gonna go ahead and introduce our problem for this first chapter. Uh, and it's gonna be called the rainforest problem. So remember in this unit, we're taking the role of ecologists, uh, there's scientists who study ecosystems. So ecologists are the uh, scientists who go out and observe ecosystems to draw conclusions about them. And today we're going to be learning about a problem with the ecosystem in Costa Rica. So on this map over here, we can see Costa Rica is a country in Central America right there. And this picture right here is a pic photograph of an ecosystem in Costa Rica. So um, thinking back to Friday's lesson, what kind of ecosystem do you think this is? And what organisms do you think might live here? So go ahead and answer that one. Box off to the right. So in the Costa Rican uh, so a lot of Costa Rica is a rainforest ecosystem, and here are some of the types of organisms that live there. You have jaguars, you have the three-toed sloth, um, lots of uh, small creatures like insects, millipedes. The, uh, this is a special type of tree that grows there, the cacropia tree. And the soil isn't um, exactly alive, but it does contain a lot of living things and is definitely gonna be an important thing for our ecosystem. So how do you think these different things might interact with each other? It's another one we're gonna have you go ahead and answer right here. Okay, so we're going to take on the role of ecologists working for the National Resources Rescue, Natural Resources Rescue, and it's a group that works to protect and save fragile ecosystems around the world. So even though just like uh, Good Food Production Incorporated and the Museum of Archaeology, this isn't a real organization, there are a lot of groups that uh, just like this one that do a lot of work in the real world to save ecosystems. So, um, so off the top of my head, uh, there's like World Wildlife Fund um, and there are a bunch of uh, organizations specifically geared towards saving the rainforests. So, so we have a project from the Natural Resources Rescue that uh, about a problem in part of the Costa Rican rainforest ecosystem. So for the next few weeks, we're going to think about how to solve that problem. So the project area used to be a healthy rainforest. Uh, then cattle ranchers came in and burned down the rainforest so they could use the land for a grazing area for their cows. Um, a lot of rainforest destruction these days is so that the land can be used for things like farming or raising cattle. Uh, so this photo uh, shows that same project area today. Um, a few years ago, the cattle ranchers left and took cows with them. And then they planted trees uh, so the area could become a rainforest again. Uh, so look at this picture um, and what do you notice? Um, so there are some trees here. Uh, called Cecropia trees and other rainforest plants that are slowly starting to grow again. And some of the rainforest animals have actually started to come back. So Natural Resources Rescue worked with volunteers to help replant the project area. They brought in a bunch of young Cecropia trees and other important rainforest plants and they planted them. Um, many parts of the world, people have done reforestation projects like this, and the forest has actually begun to grow back and thrive. So next, we're going to take a look at some information comparing the project area to a healthy rainforest area nearby. The area nearby was not burned for cattle ranching, and it remained basically in its original state. So this table compares the numbers of several organisms in the two areas. 
So you have different types of organisms, the jaguar, three-toed sloth, cecropia trees, and how big the land area is. Uh, this is the organism count in the project area. This is the organism count in the healthy rainforest. So what do you notice about the information in the table? So hopefully you notice that there were fewer animals and fewer trees in the project area, right? So there's only one jaguar here, there's four in the healthy rainforest, 16 three-toed sloths compared to 28, and 188 scorpio trees compared to 600 in the same amount of land area. So this table shows the average weight of the jaguars and the sloths in the two areas. So what do you notice about the information in this table? All right, so what you should have noticed is that both the jaguars and the sloths weigh less in the project area than the same species of animals weigh in the healthy area. So what might it mean if the animals in that project area weigh less than the animals in that healthy rainforest? Okay, so our goal here is gonna to be to restore that project area. Um, so restoring this section of the Costa Rican rainforest ecosystem and improving itself. So we have two tasks. Uh, first is to investigate why animals aren't growing and thriving in the project area. Second task is to make a plan to improve the health of the animals in the ecosystem. So think back to those data tables. You can go back in the video and look at them again if you'd like. Uh, what do you think it means when the Natural Resources Rescue report says the animals aren't growing and thriving in the project area? So basically what that means is that the animals in the project area have lower weights, uh, so they aren't growing and they're probably not as healthy as animals in the rest of the normal ecosystem. Uh, so our chapter one question is why aren't those jaguars and sloths growing and thriving. And this is the question that we're gonna be exploring throughout the rest of chapter one as in a role as ecologists for natural resources rescue. So what we're gonna do next um, is actually setting up something called a terrarium. So one way we can try to investigate the problem is by closely observing an ecosystem just like ecologists do. So we can't bring rainforests into our classroom, or in this case, into our homes, but uh, we can create some models. So a terrarium is a small scale model of an ecosystem. And just like we did for planets and like we did for molecules, we scientists all the time learn about the real world by setting up models. So we're gonna make ter those terrariums as a way to think about ecosystems that we can't observe directly. So we're gonna use these materials to make our terrariums. Uh, so we have this box that the terrarium is gonna be in. It has some holes in the top to let air and water in and out. Uh, there's going to be some leaf litter. Uh, mine doesn't look exactly like this. I just actually uh, grabbed some weeds off my balcony and chopped them up. Uh, it's and what the leaf litter does is it helps the soil maintain moisture a little better. Um, we're gonna have alfalfa seeds, we have grass seeds, and we're gonna have some uh, nutrient rich soil. So if we were doing this in class, uh, basically each group would have its own terrarium that it could set up. Uh, but fortunately I don't have the space in my apartment to set up a terrarium, so I only took home three of them. So uh, we're gonna have a little bit less variety than we probably would have in class, um, but this is these are the basic variables we're gonna be changing. So, uh, so if we were doing this in class, each person would take a terrarium, uh, each group, the soil monitor would take a terrarium, uh, scoop four cups of soil into the container, uh, move the soil with their hands, and decide whether they wanted to make it a flat terrarium or a hilly landscape in that terrarium. Um, next, uh, we had two uh, people who were gonna make decisions on the two different types of seeds. 
So there are going to be grass seeds and alfalfa seeds. We're going to either sprinkle them over a, uh, spread them out over the whole thing or put them all in one place. And we're just going to gently pat the seeds into the soil and making sure they stay near the surface. Then once the terrarium is set up, we're going to spray the soil with water uh, where the seeds were planted. I'm going to be adding about 30 sprays of water to each terrarium. And then we're gonna distribute the leaf litter, uh, which remember is one of, uh, helps the soil maintain moisture. We're gonna spread it either over the whole thing or over just part of it. So this is kind of a summary of what we're gonna see me doing in a minute here. So we're gonna add soil, we're going to sprinkle the grass and alfalfa seeds and then we're going to spray water and distribute leaf litter across the top um, and as we're doing this you're going to make i'm going to make sure that i'm not putting my hands or the soil anywhere near my mouth uh, especially um, if i had allergies to mold or other things that might be in the soil i'm going to make sure that i don't put my hands anywhere near my face or mouth and then wash my hands thoroughly when i am done so the way that I'm gonna set it up now, um, like if we were in class again, we would have had like eight different terrariums at least. So we would have been able to hopefully see a lot more variety and you guys would have been able to choose what you're doing with your terrarium. But what we're gonna do is I'm gonna uh, set up three different terrariums uh, and you are going to choose which terrarium out of these three that you're gonna be observing for the rest of the unit. So in terrarium one, we're gonna have a hilly landscape. We're gonna have the grass seeds spread out over the whole thing. The alfalfa seed is gonna be spread out over the whole thing and the leaf litter is gonna be spread out over the top of the whole thing. Uh, terrarium two, I'm gonna make flat. We're gonna group up the grass seeds, we're gonna group up the alfalfa seeds and we're gonna group up the leaf litter all together. Uh, terrarium three, we're gonna be making it flat again. I'm gonna spread out the grass seeds. I'm gonna group up the alfalfa seeds. And I'm not gonna include any leaf litter in this one. And the reason for that is um, since I just grabbed um, some basically weeds off uh, the pot that's sitting out on my patio or my, uh, my little balcony out there, um, I think there might be some seeds in those weeds. So just in case the, um, those start growing and taking over our terrariums, I wanna make sure that we have one that doesn't have any in there, so that way uh, we can see what happens when we don't get that outside interference from those weeds. So I'm gonna go set those up, so I will see you in the lab. For all our supplies right here, we have some alfalfa seed, we have some grass seed, we have some nutrient rich soil over here, we have the three terrarium crates, and we have some leaf litter here that was just taken from some weeds that started growing in a pot, a planter that we had outside from last year. So uh, first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna do these three different terrariums a little differently so we can see how different things affect each other. Um, in class, we'd have a lot more of these, uh, but I only brought home enough for three because that's all I have room for in my New York City apartment. So, uh, so what we're gonna do first, we're gonna scoop out four scoops of this nutrient-rich soil into each of these three terrariums. Didn't quite have enough to get uh, number one, all four scoops we wanted in there. So I'm just gonna take a little bit, about a quarter scoop out of each of these so that we all have the same amount here. Great, okay, so that's done. So how are we gonna shape these? So number two and three, we're just gonna shape with our hands, make them nice and flat. So that's what we wanted to do in these two. I'm just gonna pat that soil down. And notice I'm not gonna be reaching my hands for my face at all. I'm not gonna be really touching anything except for the terrariums until I get a chance at the end of the experiment here to wash my hands. And number one, we're gonna make kinda hilly. So, let's see if we can get that. There we 
go. Okay, so see from the side, number one is kind of hilly, just like that. And number two and three, make it as flat as we possibly can. So they're level all the way around. Okay, so next we're gonna take our grass seed in number one, we're gonna spread it out. As much as we can. Number two and and number three, I'm also gonna spread it out here as kind of as much as I can, just spreading it all the way around. Number two, we're gonna take about the same amount, but we're gonna group it all up in one spot right there. All right, now we're gonna take the alfalfa seed. Gonna, in number one, we're gonna spread those out over the whole thing. Number two and three, we're gonna group them all up in one spot. So number two, I'm actually gonna group them kind of right in the same place as the grass seed so we can see what happens there. And number three, we're gonna group them up right here. Okay. Now we're gonna just pat these so they're in the soil, but not too deep. So they should be right near the surface. Do the same for number three and number one. Next thing we're gonna do is take our spray bottle of water. Make sure it's on. Okay, and then we're just gonna spray each of these about 30 times. So I will definitely speed up the video here so that doesn't take so long. is take our leaf litter and in numbers one and two we're going to spread it out or sorry in number one we're going to spread it out over the top so we're going to just have that like that spread this out a little bit over here and number two we're going to just clump it all up and i'm actually going to clump it not white on top of the seeds, but kind of next to them again, just in case there's some weeds in here that might start growing. We don't want to get those mixed up with our actual plants. And because I think there might be seeds in here that might grow on their own, we're not going to put any in there just so we can see hopefully what the alfalfa and the grass look like. And this will be kind of our control to see, hey, are there any other weird plants growing in there that I might have introduced from outside? So what I'm gonna do with these, we're gonna cover them up. And then actually, yeah, let's cover these up. And then I'm gonna give you a chance to observe whichever one you choose. So once you get up to the point in the video where you've gotta make your observations and draw them in your uh, Google drawing, here is number one. So we've got number one right here. That's what it looks like from above. Here's what it looks like from the side. It's hilly. You have the seeds all spread out. You have the litter all spread out. There's number two from the top. So number two, you have all the seeds on this side, all the litter right there. And it's basically flat. It looks a little hilly from this angle, but overall, pretty flat. And then number three, we also tried to make flat. We have the alfalfa seeds over here, the grass seeds spread through the whole thing, no leaf litter here. So if you're choosing number three, make your observations for number three. Try to make it as flat as possible. There's still a little bit of hills, but not too many. Okay, so what I'm gonna do with these is I'm gonna take all three of them and I'm gonna put them over here by the window so they get plenty of light. And this is where they will live as we make our observations for the rest of the year. All right, so it's gonna be it. And head back over to you in the lab. OK, 
Okay, so we are back from the lab and um, what we're gonna do is record our observations. So to do this, uh, as far as the um, drawing goes, I'm gonna have a Google Doc that will have this observation for you and the drawing that you can make your drawing in. And we're gonna go ahead and record and observe what happens in our terrariums over the next few weeks using that same Google Doc each time. So um, in that doc, you're gonna have a box that looks just like this. And once you go into that box, let me pull up a window here. So in that box, what you'll do is insert. So you'll click inside the box that's on your Google Doc. You're going to insert a drawing. And you can make a new drawing. So this is gonna be where you draw what you see for your terrarium. So you might wanna start out with a shape. Um, let's see, our terrarium looks kind of like, let's see this one except upside down. So here we go, this one looks about right. So if we draw that, there is our terrarium. We can draw along the bottom, like let's say I'm doing the hilly one, maybe I have my soil look something like that. Um, I put my alfalfa seeds over here, so maybe I'm drawing, or these are the, if these are the grass seeds, they could be everywhere. And then maybe I wanna label those. Maybe draw an arrow pointing down to them. All right, and you're just gonna draw exactly what you see in the terrarium. And in order to see that, you're gonna go ahead and you can go back in the video. Um, I'll try to include a picture of each of them here, but the best way to do it is to just go back into the video where I made the terrariums and draw what you see based on how everything's going in for whichever terrarium you are working on, whether it's one, two, or three. Remember, you just have to do one of them. Do not do all three of them. So after you've made your initial observation, you've drawn and labeled all the parts of the terrarium. Uh, at the bottom of that doc, you're gonna make some predictions. What do you think uh, the terrarium is gonna look like in a few days? What do you think it's gonna look like in a few in about a month. Um, and then uh, what I'm gonna do is we're gonna put all these in basically the same location. They're gonna be next to each other on my windowsill. I'll show you where that is um, as I'm setting them up in the video. But it'll uh, they'll all get plenty of sunlight over there. Okay, so yeah, so as we're finishing up here, just want to see like what did we notice about our terrarium whichever one you picked and how is your terrarium different from an ecosystem in nature and right before we close out um with the second activity so we're just going to call back to this word observe we're going to be observing a lot during this unit just like we do in every unit so to observe means to use any of your five sentences to gather information about something. So when you were looking carefully at your terrariums, uh, you were doing something scientists do, which is observing or making observations. 
we observe the terrarium with our eyes, but we might also observe with our other senses like sense of smell, sense of hearing, less uh, in the previous unit we used our sense of taste to make some observations. And our final activity today is gonna be observing ecosystems. So we're gonna be practicing real quick what um, colleges do by observing and discussing some scientific drawings of ecosystems. So the way it's gonna work is I'm gonna post the ecosystem, the picture of it, and you're gonna make your observations right up here. So here is our Okay, so you're gonna observe the il each illustration and then you're gonna record your own ideas by um, writing notes on the line. Uh, you can add some labels, you can do both. Um, I'm gonna also include these as, uh, I'm gonna include these as Google Drawings that are attached to the assignment so that way um, you can do uh, anything you need to, to in order to add labels to those, write about them, so there's three different ecosystems and they'll be in your Google drawing. I'm gonna uh, have some instructions right here uh, how to get to those and what to do once you're there. Uh, the last thing you do once you make all those observations of these three different ecosystems, you're just gonna answer the question up here. Um, it's how were the ecosystems similar and how were they different? Once you're done with that, you're gonna go ahead and submit your uh, Google Classroom assignment. You're going to finish answering that question. And then in the next lesson, we're gonna read about what all ecosystems have in common. So I'll see you on Thursday so that we can start working on that. Have a good one.